Steel Dawn and Steel Rain are a story revolving around a recent Brotherhood of Steel expedition arriving from California, the Brotherhood First Expeditionary Force, who were sent to re-establish contact with the original Appalachian Brotherhood. By the time of Steel Rain, the year is 2104. This questline focuses on two members with conflicting ideals about where the Brotherhood should go, Knight Daniel Shin and Paladin Layla Ramani, as well as the scribe Odessa Valdez who acts as a mediator between the two. The story also focuses on some youth involved with the Brotherhood, such as young brothers named Colin Putnam and Marty Putnam who wish to join the Brotherhood to better humanity, an inexperienced member who lacks self-confidence named Erica Hewson, as well as a young woman who blames the Brotherhood for her family's demise named Marcia Leone. To begin the Brotherhood questline, the player must be at least level 20 and will need to visit Fort Atlas and speak to Russell Dorsey. Steel Don the Vault Dweller checks out the Brotherhood of Steel and familiarizes themselves with Shin, Ramani and Valdez. Shin's reluctance to accept newcomers into the Brotherhood is on full display when the Vault Dweller is tasked with interviewing with those who wish to speak to the Brotherhood, but he declines all their requests for various reasons. After helping Valdez check out the Brotherhood's new basement, as well as potentially recruiting either Colin or Marty, Ramani immediately tasks the probationary initiate, the Vault Dweller, to assist Ginny Brown and her villagers known as the Retreat with their local problem, a Blood Eagles gang under one violent woman named Dagger. Dagger has threatened the Retreat with the launchers for supplies. Dagger must be killed, threatened or bribed in order for her to leave the Retreat alone. Raider ambushes and theft have resulted in Brotherhood Hellstorm missile launchers falling into the hands of crater warbands. Although Ramani would like to find a way to coexist, Shin decides to head recovery efforts and retake the Brotherhood's property by any means necessary. He goes with the Vault Dweller to the makeshift vault where a raider named Pierce is reluctant to give the weapons over. No matter how the situation is dealt with, Pierce remains alive. The Brotherhood has identified the source of the Hellstorm missile launchers in Appalachia, or at least another group of wastelanders who make use of them, Foundation. Ramani wishes to reclaim the missile launchers and establishing trade relations with the settlers. At Foundation, the Vault Dweller meets Gloria and Tad Chance about the rocket launchers, although they are hesitant to give them over with a finder's keeper's attitude. They mention they might concede, but they are dealing with one problem, Mike Tiller. A young member of Foundation who was with the rocket launchers, has gone missing. It turns out that Mike accidentally slaughtered a group of the settlers in a freak accident. Harboring great guilt, Mike has fled to a mine. The vault dweller may convince Mike to forgive himself, or murder him. Whether or not Foundation respects the Brotherhood is also determined by actions taken by the vault dweller. With the Brotherhood establishing itself as a benevolent force in Appalachia, Valdez discovers a lead that allows it to fulfill its primary directive, re-establishing contact with Lost Hills by installing a satellite at an abandoned nearby enclave facility. After dealing with its malicious AI SOTUS, Shin and Ramani prepare to set up the radio communicator. However, Ramani has second thoughts. While Shin is in another room, she tells the vault dweller she plans on breaking it because views the elders as a rigid force that will jeopardize her group's authority within the organization. Ramani hints at a past mishap on their journey to Appalachia as being the reason why her authority will be stripped, and she wishes to make her brotherhood branch independent instead, seeing it as an opportunity for her to remain leader and ensure her brotherhood can truly help Appalachia. The vault dweller may agree with her, or choose not to encourage her decision. Regardless, an incredibly furious Shin discovers what happened and claims Ramani is no longer a paladin. The situation is put on hold upon hearing Fort Atlas Underground is being attacked by super mutants which the Vault Dweller helps clear out. Steel Rain the Brotherhood soon discovers that the super mutant attack on Fort Atlas was not coincidental and learns there are super mutant attacks taking place across the region. Additionally, people have begun disappearing around the region and common sense dictates there is a chance the super mutants and disappearances are linked. A lead has informed them that they may originate from the uncanny caverns. Shin takes Erica Hewson and Norland to investigate, but Norland is soon killed. Shin is angered at himself for not being there to protect Norland. Erica gets caught in a trap and Shin injures himself trying to save her. Their investigation is not completely useless, however, as the vault dweller finds a damaged Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy is given to Valdez for a clue, but she places another problem on the vault dweller.
their young refugee Marsha Leone has mysteriously disappeared. Her friend Luis Ramirez slips out the fact that she was considering joining a raider war party. The vault dweller meets Pierce again, who has Marsha by his side. Marsha refuses to return to the Brotherhood because she views them as a group of pompous assholes, partially responsible for killing her parents, and she deems the war party, which also includes Sheena and Burke, as her new family. Burke and Sheena have gone missing while on a plan to investigate Am's corporate headquarters in Watoga, and Marsha plans to save them. Knowing Valdez and Ramirez care about Marsha's safety, the vault dweller and Marsha investigate the building, defeat a mercenary of the Hellcat company called Kit, and rescue Sheena and Burke in the basement. Whether or not Marsha returns to the Brotherhood is left up to how the vault dweller treated her and her friends. With the Marsha situation sorted out, Romani has encountered a farmer Art Knapp. He is concerned about the missing people himself as his niece Cassie Halloway has disappeared after setting out with the Blue Ridge Caravan Company to come to Appalachia, but the caravan says she never came with them to Appalachia. Romani decided to interview the boss of the Blue Ridge Caravan Company, Joanna Mayfield, about the disappearances. After being guided by Ares, Romani learns that a scientist Edgar Blackburn was among several of the Blue Ridge's caravans, especially one that holed up in the Harper's Ferry Tunnel due to a rat storm. The vault dweller had previously interviewed Blackburn back when they originally began interacting with the Brotherhood. Valdez and the vault dweller head to Vault 96 where they rescue survivors, including Cassie, and capture Blackburn who has been using helpless victims as experiment subjects, many of whom have died. Blackburns tries to paint himself using, the end justifies the means, logic, claiming everything he has done has been in the name of science to help make a formula for humanity to survive the wasteland. Back at Fort Atlas, Blackburn taunts the Brotherhood, saying he has associates going to test the formula, a modified forced evolutionary virus, FEV, and release it into the atmosphere for a major science experiment. Romani and Shin take him to the West Tech Research Center, where his fellow scientists Farha, Jane and Nellie Wright were putting the final touches on the FEV to release into the water and air, which would lead to more people being turned into super mutants once exposed, a worst-case scenario even worse than Huntersville. In a bid to prove their research is for the betterment of humanity in the wasteland, Blackburn willingly volunteers to be exposed to the virus himself, but a miscalculation or malfunction in the process causes Blackburn to be turned into a violent super mutant behemoth, forcing Romani and Shin to kill him. After, Shin erupts at Romani, scolding her that something like this was just what the elders wanted to prevent. People trying to play God with science. Though Romani agrees with him on that, when they confront Blackburn's associates, they plead for mercy and ask that their lives be spared, considering that their research is invaluable to the wasteland with the loss of schools and universities because of the Great War and the decay that followed. Though Romani wants to spare them because of how valuable human life is nowadays, Shin is adamant that they be slain after seeing firsthand just how dangerous their knowledge is should it fall into the wrong hands if they are allowed to live. The vault dweller may slaughter the scientists or spare them, allowing them to become researchers for the Brotherhood. In the end, the conflict over Blackburn's associates results in Ramani and Shin parting ways, unable to reach an agreement, with one either being killed or allowed to return to Maxon, while the other takes command of the Brotherhood to lead them on their new duty to Appalachia. If Ramani is sided with, Shin mentions he and some Brotherhood members will walk all the way back to California to report Ramani's actions to the Council of Elders. If Shin is sided with, Ramani sorrowfully leaves the room because she does not wish to witness the executions, and what happens to her after is unclear in this route. Back at Fort Atlas, either Shin or Ramani holds a celebration for the Vault Dweller, promoting them to a knight. Vernon Dodge, a member of the original Brotherhood, may join as well if he was found and encouraged to join the new Brotherhood. Back at Foundation, Cassie may be informed of Blackburn's death. Cassie is glad to hear he has died, though admits she cannot help but pity him a little. She reiterates that although Blackburn performed evil atrocities in the name of science and medicine, he ultimately did not take pleasure in his experiments. This coincides with Blackburn's claims in his holotapes that, in spite of his cruel acts, he genuinely loved and wanted to help humanity.